Please stand for the words of our King. Our Gospel this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So far, our text. Please be seated. Good morning. The words you just heard about were me. That was my call into the public ministry. Now you might be saying, who exactly are you? Well, my name is Matthew. I used to be called Levi, and I know it's a little confusing, but Jesus liked to change the names of people. It was part of our conversion, I suppose, part of becoming part of his disciples, one of the twelve. Well, I was named Matthew because Jesus wanted me to be something different than what I was. Let's go back all the way to the beginning. My parents named me Levi. It's a good name. Names used to have a lot of meaning. Um, It means attached or associate. But the real importance of Levi was that that was the name of a tribe of Israel. One of the original twelve. And so that's why my parents named me Levi. But when I started to follow Jesus, I went from Levi to Matthew. I went from being a tax collector to an evangelist. I went from being a sinner to being righteous before God. I think a lot of you like to gather for worship. But from what I hear, now's not a good time necessarily to do that. Public worship is one of the most dangerous places you can be if you want to try to avoid COVID. And while we are free to gather, I still think it's a good idea for some of you to stay home. I know that Pastor Fred tells his parents to stay home and not to go to church yet because it's just too dangerous. Well, wherever you're watching, wherever you're gathering, whether it be online or in person here at Star of Bethlehem, you're still gathered around one God in spirit. And you're gathering around His Word. And that's what's really important. I have to tell you that one time I went to church, we called it synagogue, and it didn't go well. They actually told me that I wasn't welcome. And they told me that I had to leave. I was, how you say, put out of the synagogue. Have you, has that ever happened to you? Has anyone ever told you you're not welcome at a church? It was terrible. You see, the problem was that I got a new job. And uh, they called me a liar. They called me a traitor. And uh, you'd think, with all that buildup, that I was hanging out with prostitutes or thieves or organized crime, but I was a public relations consultant. Maybe you could call me a tax collector. Some of you might know me as a publican. And I don't think there's anything wrong with taxes, Jesus says that we should give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God's what is God's. The problem with you is that you only have taxes you have to settle up once a year in April or I suppose this year, everything's weird, in July. But your taxes are taken out of your check automatically. When you go to Burger King, they're just added to your bill, the 15 cents or whatever on your Whopper. You don't even see the taxes. Back in my day, A few thousand years ago, taxes were a big deal. And there's a lot of danger involved. Everybody had to give to Uncle Caesar. And I have to tell you, we hated those Gentiles. And I say we because I considered myself a Jew, even though the rest of my people thought I was an outcast. There were even a few rebellions, but they were viciously put down. The Romans just slaughtered anybody that got in their way. So there was law and order, even if it was a little scary. Now, I don't know what you picture taxes to be like in the ancient world, but 
you have to think of, I suppose, a toll booth as you're going down the road and all the traffic has to stop and pay the 15 cents in West Virginia. Whether you've got chickens or a jug of oil, you had to come right by my toll booth and I would tell you what the tax was and I would add a little bit on. I had to eat. And maybe, depending on how you looked, I might charge a little bit extra. No one really knew because I was the one keeping track. And I had two burly Roman soldiers right next to me, so if anybody caused problems, well, there weren't any. People just paid it. That was part of the problem, is that people hated me for this. Now, I have to tell you, in the grand scheme of things, I was a little fish. You've heard of that wee little man, Zacchaeus? He was a big player. He was one of the ones that actually made the contracts with Rome. I was just the guy that they saw who took the money. I was just the messenger. And yes, maybe I did take some that I wasn't supposed to, but that's kind of how the business was. But i got to tell you, not everyone hated me. I met a lot of people. And as people would come by, they'd talk to me, and they'd talk about this guy named Jesus. And he was pretty amazing. The first thing is that he would actually talk to me. And I don't know if you know what it's like to be an outcast, to be not liked by anyone, to know what it's like to be alone. And then, to have someone take time and actually care about you. To say, how's it going? And mean, how's it really going? Like, they want you to say how your day was. That makes a big impact. Maybe you consider that next time someone doesn't always look like they want to respond. Show some interest in them. Well, Jesus was different because he hung out with the likes of me. He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He cured cripples. They could walk. He cast out demons, and you should have heard him teach. He wasn't like the Pharisees that just had extra rules to make you feel like you weren't good as they were. He said what God expected, and then he did something different. He said that God satisfied those demands. God is the one who makes you righteous, not you. That was completely different, and to just think that I could be forgiven. Now, one day... Jesus came through the, the toll line and I was happy to see him. He always paid his taxes. And he said, follow me. I thought, me? You want me to follow you? I just left everything. I left my job, no two-week notice. I walked away from it. And I followed Jesus. Now, that might sound crazy, but you have to understand, a lot, a lot of people wanted to follow Jesus. And there are some people, in fact, if you go back one chapter in my gospel here, in chapter 8, you're going to find that a guy tried to follow Jesus and he said, no. Jesus turned people down. But he wanted me. Now that's pretty exciting. I became, Levi the tax collector became Matthew the evangelist. I like how that sounds. And now I don't think you should necessarily wait around for the Holy Spirit to prompt you to write the 28th book of the New Testament. That was kind of wonderful to be able to do that. I had to keep track of my taxes, organized. Writing a gospel, a biography of Jesus was a very doable thing for me. And that work has served humanity for the past 2,000 years. But I think there's a different idea about how you can serve. I don't really know why Jesus asked. That falls under the umbrella of mercy. We're going to talk about that in a second. But the how, that's pretty important. You see, I think you can do this too. One of the things I would do is I had a party. And I would invite my friends and then I would introduce them to Jesus. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? But that was my means of evangelism. We call that friendship witnessing nowadays, I guess. That's what I hear anyway. Yeah, that's what you do. You don't even actually actually witness per se. You just introduce them to other Christians and maybe they can. And you'll grow in confidence if you're not used to witnessing. But today you're talking about mercy. And this is the perfect Sunday to talk about mercy because you have to understand no one wanted me except Jesus. 
And it is a little rough to know that you've been kicked out of your church. And it's a little rough if maybe you were divorced. Maybe you, um, maybe you were part of a church, but you left because people were mean. Maybe you've done something that you're ashamed of. You think not even Jesus loves you. The word in the Hebrew is chesed. It means mercy. Mercy is kindness to someone who doesn't deserve it. Mercy means even though someone's guilty, they don't receive punishment. Mercy means that it depends on the heart of the giver of that mercy. Not on the merit of the person who receives it. So it's impossible to be worthy of mercy. That's not something that exists. So when you show mercy, you don't care who the person is. You just take a genuine interest in them because God does. It's pretty easy to be merciful. The problems come in because you might think there's some risk here. What if people think less of me? You kind of have to throw that to the, to the, to the wind. You don't worry about that. All you worry about is showing mercy. And there's a case in point that I want to go back and show you. This is maybe hard to listen to, but it's true. This is verse 11. When the disciples saw this, they asked his, when the Pharisees saw this, excuse me, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? The Pharisees were always picking on Jesus. They knew that he was better than they were because he was perfect, he was God. And they hated it. So every chance they got, they tried to pick on him and find something wrong. But this doesn't really phase Jesus. Listen to verse 12. On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Now you just heard that in the prophet of Hosea. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And Jesus kind of fleshes it out for you. Those are herbs. They're great. I love them. They give flavor to your life. But, do you know those common garden plants were grown by everybody? Because you didn't go to the grocery store, especially if you could just grow it yourself. Some of you still do that today. It's a good habit. Well, the Pharisees were so picky with following God's rules that they thought if they tithed even their garden plants, God would love them. They missed it completely. God wants you to give back something that you have to Him. That's called stewardship. But that doesn't make you right with God as if that's good enough. God wants you to show mercy to people. It's okay to tithe your garden, I suppose. That's kind of got to go into the extreme. But just to go around and be kind and to show mercy is extremely powerful. Because I don't know what life is like exactly nowadays, but back in my day, life was harsh and cruel. People do not look at you. People are not kind. There's a general hostility in the world. Just look at Rome. It was rough. Now maybe you can't imagine what that's like. But it's pretty awful. And so I'm telling you that as you witness to those who need mercy... It can make an incredible dif difference in the world. This is the second half of verse 13. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. I am a walking poster board for what it's like to be shown mercy to. It can make an incredible difference. I didn't think it was possible for me. I never thought that I'd step foot in a church again. Because I thought, the church of my day, the synagogue, hated me. But that simply isn't true. God loves everyone. So can you imagine someone in your life to whom you can speak to and just take a general interest in? Could they go from Levi to Matthew? From tax collector to evangelist? From sinner to forgiven? I bet you... I bet you could do that. And I bet that person, even though they can't imagine it, you could help them just by showing a little mercy. Amen. Please stand.